Yeah. I, I can do nine. I can do nine. Cool. Hi, I'm Tyler Van Heeren. I'm an engineer here at Statsig, and today I'm going to talk about how to test your experiment. Uh, this is like before I give it to real life production users. How do I feel comfortable, confident that all my variants look as they should, and that you know I'm not causing any major performance regressions, right? Obviously, we run A-B tests, we run experiments in order to determine the actual impact on our users and measure like at a finer level impact on performance, but you should have had someone on your end go through these experiences before you give it to people. And this is how you do that. There's a few different levels of this, and I, I think sort of there's some order that I often go through when I'm doing them. Uh, the first is just overrides. This is a way to say, hey, I want this person, this ID, to get this experience. So especially as an engineer, as a developer, I will say, hey, give me test, and then give me control. If I'm running three experiments, or three experiences, rather, three variants, I will override myself into each one of them and make sure they look fine to me, right? Uh, you can also even override a larger group of users if I have some like dog booting session I'm running, right? Just give everyone the test experience and make sure we're all validating that. The next is lower environments. If you have some like staging environment uh, that a lot of people throughout your company use for internal dog fooding, you can turn it on, turn on the experiment for just that environment without bringing it out into prod so that people like actually just in their normal dog fooding uh, get to get randomly assigned between control and test and experience your experiment live. And then the final step is unit tests are important, so we give you plenty of ways to actually make sure that you are putting your unit tests into the right variants, uh, particularly if you're running some like backend heavy experiment, right? So overrides are the most direct, most straightforward way of saying, I want this person to get this experience. You say a literal group uh, from your experiment that these users are going to get, and then you override either an ID or a conditional override, which is going to be a group, or, sorry, a gate or a segment. Uh, I think segments are really, really handy for this. Uh, we have like a segment for everyone on a certain team at Statsig so that you can quickly add all of them to test, again, for that sort of dog fooding use case. One other thing that I'll give a shout out here uh, is we have the ability to let you save a single ID. Uh, if you go to your account settings on Statsig, like your personal account, um, you can actually say, this is my ID, this represents me. Um, I want you to just let me override myself quickly into experiments. So it's a it's, uh, pretty nice quality of life, especially if you're just running like some logged in tests, right? Lower environments are your way to start rolling things out before you roll them out in production to end users. This is actually treating it like the experiment is now started for those lower environments, but those lower environments only. Overrides completely bypassed all of this. Overrides don't care if the experiment is started or not. They're just saying this person gets this experience. For the lower environments, we're saying, okay, pretend it started, but still let it go through the rest of that sort of flow chart of should you be in the experiment, what group should you get, et cetera. So with lower environments, you're actually letting the randomization happen as, as normal. You're letting your targeting gate happen as normal. You're letting allocation happen as normal so that you can actually get that feedback from other people you know, at your company. Hey, I ran into this experience. Uh, and it'll happen at like the right proportion of what you're actually testing. And yeah, these lower environment exposures don't count towards pulse. So your user, your employees are often very, very different from your end users in terms of how they use their product. So you don't have to worry about them sort of polluting your pulse results there. And then finally, unit tests. Uh, this is your way to say, like, programmatically, I want to make sure that I am in this experience for this device, for this test. Uh, we store these into local storage on the device. So if you need to wipe them out after the fact, that's what remove all overrides is for, or just remove override. Um, but yeah, you're just able to say, for this experiment, uh, just return this value uh, locally. One thing worth noting is even if you're not adding a new unit test to test out your you know, sort of test experience, you might still want to go through your unit tests and make sure that you're putting users in the right control experiences uh, if your unit tests might fail if they are randomly allocated between the two, right? So yeah, unit tests, local overrides are your friend. And then finally, if you really want to go above and beyond in terms of making it really, really easy to override people in Statsig, uh, one thing that I'd call out here is the console API. 
The console API is our way of letting you do anything that you could do in Statsig, like in the UI, programmatically. And so folks will often use this to have some like little widget that employees only can open in their app, in their browser. Um, that will give them an actual list of experiments and then let them just override themselves then and there. Especially in an app or like, you know, front end experiment, you will likely have all of that information, uh, you know, about what their user ID is right now, right then and there. So you can just add and override via your own UI, um, via console API. Console API in general lets you sort of do anything you want programmatically yourself. Yeah, so hopefully with that, uh, you feel very comfortable going through Statsig, uh, making sure that you have tested out all of your experiences before you start giving out to prod users, and we can start turning on that experiment, pressing start and letting it, letting real data flow through. Thanks.